Welcome back to the Torque Test channel, and after what I assume to have been a long await for many of you, another new dyno rig on the channel. This one measuring actual real-time displayed watts and thus horsepower, which we have planned to use on not just die grinders from today and future episodes, but on cutoff tools and with other differently spec DC motors swapped in everything from right angle grinders to part of our future cordless drills testing but we'll consider all suggestions in the comments section too. We wanted to do a full build video, but decided instead to just include our build of this dyno into our first head-to-head -head testing of Airtools first cordless here. This is a cordless die grinder, the top of the line from Milwaukee and their M12 fuel offering 2486-20. What's a bit unique about this is that this is the first time a cordless die grinder has approached an Airtool size. These things are normally massive, basically old school corded die grinders with the battery, nothing a mechanic would really use that often. And for the right angle M12 2485 model die grinder that we borrowed from our friend Jim over at Philly Fixed, it's the same story. Both of these two Milwaukee models advertise being 20% more powerful than air and one third horsepower. Well, we have one third horsepower air die grinders, which are fairly common. This is the Onyx 201 air model rated for one third horsepower as well. So theoretically they should be the same power, or more power than this Harbor Freight right angle die grinder that's one quarter horsepower sized. And we're gonna find out, which full disclosure, I'm biased, I work on air tools a lot, but a major part of what we do here is come up with testing rigs that try to take bias out of the equation and just show you the beans. So it started with this, the highest RPM, most powerful DC motor we could source, which is made for a CNC or CNC router setup. Finding one that is DC, powerful and can go up to at least 20,000 RPM like die grinders do was tougher than we assumed. The beauty of one of these puppies is that while feeding juice into one of these makes for an effective spindle motor, turning that backwards and spinning it with a tool will generate watts of electricity, turning it basically into a generator. And its call it mates right up to quarter inch die grinder shanks quite nicely. The next major part of this puzzle is something to not only measure but demand and soak up those watts, so with the leads off the motor, it's gonna feed into this, a battery load tester. This will pull volts, amps, watts, whatever we desire from the motor and thus pulling a load and straining the die grinder, potentially bogging it down until we dial that back to where the tool can operate effectively. So with the motor mounted to some beefy C channel, our next step is to mount a Hall effect sensor reading off of that motor so you can follow along at home and see the tool's live RPM. Realistically, volts itself is directly correlated with that RPM. So you'll see the volts drop on the display here if the tool is struggling, but seeing it in real relatable RPM would be much nicer for both you and us. So with this mounted, just needed to machine a hole in the back of this cooling drum for the motor to glue a magnet in place and wire in a five digit digital display, which took over a month to get here. Five digit displays that go up to 99,000, much harder to find than four digit ones, as it turns out. So the load tester is situated here, which feeds into the motor. We have a lot of volts and amps options to pull from this, but we'll mostly be tasking it with just pulling total watts of power, which converts super easily into horsepower. The Hall effect sensor I set up to run off of this single five amp hour DeWalt 12 volt battery pack which was very convenient. The spades just clip into the terminals nicely and boom, we have RPM and volts being picked up from that 150 volt, 800 watt max motor. This is what the scoring is gonna look like. Simply put, the green boxes are specs and info. White are its test results and scores. Gold is their total score, which they will be ranked by and yellow is additional info. We've been wanting to test tools such as these for a long time. We also have, of course, a $15 lower power Harbor Freight right angle die grinder and a four times the price half horsepower die grinder from the chief brand of Harbor Freight should we need to break that out to compare to the numbers these tools do put out. And to pull back the curtain on some industry speak, air tool horsepower is that of the motor inside of these tools. It's like BHP versus horsepower at the wheels. Here's an example of an actual dyno chart from a die grinder manufacturer that we were able to acquire. And this is a right angle one third horsepower tool. It puts out 0.293 horsepower after it's call it. So even air tools, they're not exempt from flashy industry specs fudgery. Let's see what these Milwaukee die grinders can do then. The right angle motor being in line with the output shaft should be an advantage for this tool over an air tool using a gearbox in its head. 
We're gonna start out with the straight M12 with a CP 2.0 battery, as compact as this tool gets, and starting off with 150 watts. Didn't exactly love that, but it likes 160 watts even less. So gonna play around with lower levels of power until we find what this tool prefers. Basically the point at which it's not diving down in RPM by the hundreds, but more like by the tens or steady as she goes. And for this tool that appears to be 130 watts. It will run okay at 140 watts, but the tool goes into protection mode for heat or whatever reason and dies with a 140 watt load eventually. And then it won't turn back on, so not sustainable use of that power level. But one of the great things about cordless grinders and cutoff tools is they are basically brushless motors with a spindle attached, no gearbox or spring or impact mechanism to dampen the effects, the additional juice a better battery can deliver if the motor is willing to soak it up. And just motor-wise, these are quite big compared to what you'd normally find inside equivalent tools because they are just a motor inside. So let's see if an XC 6.0 can brighten things up. And at noticeable but still lowish power levels, 120, 130 watts, this tool is now excelling. Here's what the tool RPM difference looks like between the CP 2.0 and XC 6.0, a 3000 RPM average difference. When it comes to its max power though, let's take a look. 140 watts, still steady RPM from the tool. 160 falls, but then decently steady. 170, definitely lower RPM, but still steady-ish on that RPM. However, the tool cuts out from protection yet again. Just varying load like you would be using the tool, we found this happens at 160 and 170 watt levels during periods of even 10 seconds of use. And that's fairly simple math for watts to horsepower, but out the gate this tool should get dinged for the size difference with the new battery. Now we're going to measure tool size by volume in the series as you might have seen on our rank chart. I know it sounds kind of silly, but basically the area of space it takes up, which you can find by dunking it into a large graduated cylinder or pitcher like this, measuring that volume increase. The bag here helps it not include water that would be rushing into the tool. and counts these dead areas around the tool that don't help you much when fitting it into a small area. So for this straight M12 die grinder, that's 525 milliliter, starting out with negative 52 and a half or negative 53 points here for that size. But that's 600 milliliters with the XC 6.0 battery, so negative 60. Our first column will be thousands of RPM at 130 watts. In case it's not pure power that you're after, but speed under some load, that's 13.1 points for the CP 2.0 and 16.1 for the 6.0. Then peak and sustained watts, the M12 straight made 140 watts here and 170 watts with a 6.0 as its peak power. What Milwaukee means when they say up to one third horsepower, though it's not super useful to you if it cuts off in protection mode from that. So we'll also have sustained watts here, which is 130 and 150. Nothing to rank it against yet, but the big question, what horsepower are we seeing? This 140 and 170 watts peak equates to just 0.188 and 0.228 horsepower. And that's peak, the power level at which the tool will cut off. And the longer you use it, the hotter it is. This can be done with one finger worth of load on this particular tool. So at least on our dyno pulling watts, not one third horsepower, not 0.3 horsepower like air tools would usually show, and not one quarter horsepower either, a bit under one quarter horsepower. But fear not, we have a one quarter horsepower Harbor Freight die grinder to compare it with that sells for $25 or less. It's considerably smaller than the M12 right angle, but up front the head sounds like a box of rocks and it spits gear oil out that head while running, not pneumatic oil. Here's its run at 130 watts to check RPM. And it did not like 130 watts. Or 120 watts. Or 110 watts. So we're looking at a 100 watt right angle die grinder here. And even then it's around 10,000 RPM, so half of what it can run at. 
that's 0.134 horsepower, near half roundabouts where it should be. It may be small, but that's about it. So maybe air tools are just bad about their horsepower, categorically. Is our dyno just reading low in general? Here's the air straight die grinder that's rated for one third horsepower. Let's look at its RPM at 130 watts of load first versus the M12 straight. So one to 4,000 RPM up on that M12 tool depending on the battery you use. Let's see what it can do. We're running 100 to 110 PSI at the tool, Milton V fitting and 3 8 hose, which is typical for many air setups, but obviously your results may vary. 170 watts, 180 watts, 190 watts, 200 watts. 210 watts and the RPM starts to slope down, not maintaining it for very long, but 200 watts seems to hold fairly steady. So 17,200 RPM average at 130 watts, 210 peak but maintains at 200 watts, that's 0.28 horsepower, pretty close to the 0.297 we've seen on an actual dyno chart for a one-third horsepower air tool. After all, we do have a motor that has a fan cooling itself. There were no water-cooled ones in this DC class of motors we could find. So it sounds about right. My 13 gallon air compressor at home with just T-type fittings made 190 to 100 watts on this tool, just to give you an idea. Let's see how the M12 right angle does. Using a CP 2.0, this is what its 130 watt dyno run looks like versus the other so far. So over 2000 RPM up on the M12 straight using the same battery, that's not bad. At 150 watts, it seems quite steady. Then even at 160, it's not able to hold things steady and soon starts to drop fast. This is a 150 watt setup, either way you look at it. Looking at things with an XC 6.0 now, we pick up more RPM and still above the straight M12, which is interesting to me because it looks like a smaller motor on the tool. Now this particular tool is tough to dyno. At many different power levels, it will cut out sometimes for as little as one to three seconds of that output. We found it can maintain 150 watts for quite some time, but 180 watts, not reliably, 170 watts it can hold RPM, but will cut out after much use, and found even 160 watts would do this as well. It's a bit fickle, as we found in person as well. This makes for 150 watts sustained, about 170 watts peak, like the straight tools. So just the two amp hour pack seeing a comparable advantage here, though this is a larger overall in volume displacement. This worked out to the same 0.228 horsepower for reaching the same 170 peak watts. 180 would often cause it to cut out nearly instantly. So it seems we didn't see anything today that required a half horsepower rated Chi from Harbor Freight to take on just yet. So just what cordless die grinder you want to see versus that and these others next. Though we still felt a gearbox in the head of these air tools is surely worth something as far as power loss goes though. And we wanted to see that. So this is the 204 right angle one third horsepower die grinder. And it ended up being much closer to the M12 anyways. So here's that. It's dyno graph first. Its average RPM is quite similar to the straight air die grinder, but oddly climbed rather than sloped down. Not sure why. This tool felt rather at home at 200 watts. 210 would just see it fall too fast to be considered its peak power rating. 200 watts, either way you look at it. That means perhaps we're seeing that 5% difference here. Our equipment does seem sensitive enough to pick that sort of thing up. So to total our findings, we got 276.1 points total from across all of this for being the best version of the M12 straight. A very close 273.8 points for the right angle M12. 177 points for the Harbor Freight GP die grinder, 407.2 here, and 397, putting these air ones at the top for now, and this air one at the bottom with Milwaukee in the middle. But don't think the war is over just yet, we've been testing some stuff that we just bought, and we think things are going to get shaken up real fast. And this is how we're going to rank them purely on size and performance, but if you want to look at their scores versus their price, that's 11.63 points. 6.62, 1.39, 1.38, and yeah, this one just don't risk it with one of these. Harbor Freight makes some decent air tools here and there, 
but this is not one of them in my opinion. Power alone not being the reason, this is already feeling like it's going to die within the week if I were to use it. These are complex tools just like you would with any cordless tool in its brand. In my experience for air tools like these, it's best to stick with brands known for making air tools. Now I feel with the difference we got today from different battery types, which was some dramatic differences at times, we could test battery performance across a brand with this dyno quite effectively. Visit the 5.0 and 2.5 high output M12 batteries with some real results, if they are to be found. Suggest die grinders, cutoff tools, other things you want to see below. And with die grinders, there's not a whole lot of additional models that I know of out there that compare to this. There's basically this one, then maybe this one, but it looks a bit too big to compare as well. I don't know, you tell us. Click subscribe to join us for that. We make episodes every Friday. Thank you for watching.